What's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about the seven phases of your business. These are the phases that we have used to build seven-figure companies, and many of our clients have used to go from zero to six, seven, eight figures and beyond. Okay, maybe not beyond. I don't think we've had any nine figures, <laughs> but we're going to get there. One of you is going to get there. Apply the things that we will teach you today and guaranteed that you will grow a successful business. It's not easy, but it's very possible, and it will change your life forever. Should we get going? Let's do it. Let's get to it. Let's go. Now, before we dive in, I've got a secret to tell you. You want to hear the secret, Tara? Yeah, tell me. And everybody else, all a business really is, is a list of to-dos. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> profound. That's the whole point. It's so not profound and so basic and so simple that someone might miss it. That's all a business is. It's a list of to-dos. And once you execute on this list of to-dos, you have money, 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 money. <laughs> now, once again, just to reiterate, not saying this is easy. In fact, it'll be the hardest thing you'll ever do. Not because it takes more effort than anything else, like going to school or working for someone else, but it's because we're dealing with us. And a brain can sometimes be a little funny. It can be your friend or it can be your enemy. <laughs> exactly. Now, here's the catch. Oh, there's the catch. I knew there was a catch. There's always a catch. No one can come up with this to-do list for you. What? That would be way too easy. That would be cheating. <laughs> but the good news is that wouldn't be nearly as fun either. It or fulfilling. It wouldn't be fulfilling. It wouldn't be exciting. There would be no point to it. Okay, you make a lot of money. But yeah. <laughs> I, say, I can see some point well, to it. Okay. One of our primary objectives here is always empowerment. Tara and I could start, scale, and automate a successful business in any industry from anywhere in the world. Our goal is to get you inside of our brain and empower you so you can do the same thing. Once you understand a few concepts, you'll be able to think like a business freak as well. <laughs> Remember, your to-do list is always going to be changing and adapting, but you've got to start somewhere. So in order to help you come up with your to-do list, we're gonna go through the seven phases of a business so you can identify where you currently are and where you need to go next. We'll also give you an idea of how long each one of these phases should take so you can stay on track. You ready, baby cakes? Yep, this is the process we have used time and time again to create seven-figure businesses. Phase one is the discovery phase. This is where you determine what product or service you will be selling. The product or service that is going to put you on the map, that is going to help you make the mega millions, that is going to give you financial independence and help you live a rich life of abundance. Wow, that is a lot of pressure. And bring world peace to the world. Hope you have some really good ideas <laughs> of figuring this out because, wow, we talked a lot about this in episode two, so feel free to go check that out. If you already know what you want to do, this could be like 15 minutes. Or, well, or, you already know. Or two seconds. <laughs> you so I guess know. you already know. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, they got it. <laughs> if not, just give yourself one to two days. Don't spend forever on this. Just remember, if you're trying to figure this out, write down all the things you're good at. Write down all the things that interest you and look for commonalities. Or look for things that you know of that could be changed or fixed or anything you've ever thought of or heard of someone say they have a problem with. You can go make it better. <laughs> At the end of the day, what does your gut and what does your heart say? So I think the biggest point that we want to make sure we make here, and this is what we've gotten a lot of questions about and I hear from people all the time, is you do not need this crazy new original idea. In fact, it's probably a lot better if you don't. I can't tell you how often someone has come to Tara or myself and they're like, hey, I've got this idea for this business. It's almost like they won't even tell us what it is because they're nervous that someone's going to find out. Anytime I hear this, I'm very concerned. Number one, because if you don't tell anyone about your business, no one's ever going to be able to buy it from you. <laughs> like that's the whole point of marketing and sales. The hard part is not getting people not to listen to your awesome idea. It's getting them to listen to your awesome idea. And number two, the truth is there's probably like tons of people who have done something very similar. They're just not aware of it. And number three, if it really is this crazy original idea, then I'm like, ah, oh, like that's going to be difficult. That's going to be a hard uphill battle. Good luck with that. Because I just like to copy people. <laughs> I know Tara says it's illegal, but I don't think it is. So it I think it is. You do it the <laughs> wrong way. You don't copy. You just do research. And anyway, okay. But the bottom line is, there's millions of people out there making tons of money. You can just see a combination of a bunch of different things that a lot of people are doing. 
and be like, oh, that works, that works, that works. I'm going to try a different variation, like put in your message, obviously your product, your voice, what works for you and go, go do it. You're unique. So you selling a particular product in your way always makes it unique. We all have tons of original-ish ideas. So you can literally find a few people in your industry, see what you like from each person, see what you don't like from each person, keep what you like, take out what you don't like. Once again, yes, like Tara said, don't take someone's exact sales letter and copy it verbatim, right? Like that's not what I'm talking about. But this will give you inspiration and ideas and you'll see things that you feel like could be improved. You're going to start researching other people's companies and you're going to have your own in a way, original ideas, because they're the way you see the world and you're the only one who sees it that way. So you're the one who can teach from that way or sell from that way. Mm, preach. Another thing is if you come up with this big, huge, crazy idea, or you're going to have this big, huge product development, you're risking a lot more capital up front. Anyway, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but we'll talk more about this kind of stuff as we go on. And if you do have a big idea and you do want to risk capital, go right ahead. We're just saying you just don't have to. Totally. It depends on your situation. If you started lots of businesses before, if you've got a million bucks sitting in the bank or investors that are just like ready to go and you have a lot of business background, you've done startup. Awesome. I feel like a lot of people don't get into business because they look at it as this big, scary thing that they don't know what to do or they have to come up with this crazy original idea, invest millions of dollars in their entire life savings. And it's just not true. I think that's part of the reason why so many people don't take advantage of this American dream that we have, this opportunity that is before us, that all the information is out there. Because I think there's a lot of misconceptions and brainwashings and <laughs> conspiracy theories. Wait, I agree. I guess I I'm think... the, the conspiracy theorist, I... right? <laughs> <laughs> there's a big myth for sure that the reason why people are successful is because they have this unique new idea that nobody's ever thought of. And that's why it went crazy. I hate to break it to you guys, but it's because of their marketing that it went crazy. It is That's pretty much like, it. I just found out yesterday, literally, that Apple didn't even create the iPod. What? Did you know that? No. <laughs> or the MP3 player. I mean, they, they called it the iPod, but the MP3 player was already out there. They just had a better message around it, and they just sold it better. Okay, so once again, do not give yourself very much time for this. If you want to change it up, you can. Any time along this process, you can change up what your idea is. But if you give yourself weeks and months to come up with an idea. Yeah, you'll never get anywhere. Well, as a business owner, you make a lot of decisions on a daily basis. So if some of these decisions that are kind of more fun and interesting and engaging are taking way too long, the harder decisions are going to take even longer. So your goal is to shorten the window that it takes for you to make decisions because you're going to be making a lot of them and a lot of important decisions. Yes. One of our goals is to get you taking action so fast because the truth is you're going to fail. You're going to fail hard. You're going to struggle. And I say fail hard. I don't mean you're going to lose a ton of money because you're going to follow the things we're talking about. You're not going to go invest a ton of money and all these things. But the quicker you get going and realize where you need to adjust and pivot, the faster you can do that. But if you don't even get to a point where you know that you can maybe pivot until you're like a year or two in, by then, you're going to give up on yourself. Other people are going to be like, oh, yeah, Joe over here didn't really know what he's doing. Your spouse or family or loved ones are going to be like, "Is are you making money? Is anything working out? And <laughs> so you've got to, as we say, fail forward fast. You've got to get going as quickly as you possibly can so you can then identify where you need to adjust. It's almost like we have this crystal ball and we know that it's going to be super hard. We know that you're going to fail. We know that you're going to need to adjust and try different things out to find what works for you. And then when you get a bunch of little things that work, you kind of put all those things together. And then over time, it becomes this exponential growth thing where it just kind of all works together. And it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Oh. <laughs> Did you make that song up? It's, a, it's beautiful. It's a J-Dog original. <laughs> all right. Phase two, the learning and the research phase. I love this phase. It's like you're an FBI agent and you're going to go to your competitors or other people in your industry and you're going to check out what they're doing. This is where you learn all you can about your product, your industry, or the skill that you're trying to develop and market. This phase should take about one to two weeks. You're going to be searching all about the product, category, skill, whatever it is that you need to learn about what it is that you're going to be selling. So you're pretty sure that you know that you want to sell dog toys. You'd want to begin your search by searching... Dog toys. Wow, you're smart. I know, I'm so smart. And you'll see all these companies that are selling dog toys. How are they doing it? What ads are they running? What is their website like? What other things are they selling on their website? Check out websites, blogs, videos, podcasts. But don't get too distracted by all those cute dog videos. Did you know there are actually tools that allow you to spy on your competition? Ooh. We sometimes use this tool called SEM Rush. You'll see examples of different ads that people are running and the different ways that they are marketing in your industry. 
pretty cool. So maybe check out between five to 10 companies. With a few of them, you'll probably want to go deep into and really check out what they're doing. And then the rest, just kind of see what's going on a little more surface level. Now, this is something you're going to be doing ongoing, but this is just to get you started. You'll also want to see if there is anyone teaching how to sell in your industry or niche. You can check out podcasts, video blogs, similar things. They might be teaching you specifically how to sell what you're trying to sell. So in one situation, you're basically checking out your competition to see what they're doing. And then the other situation, you're trying to find videos, blogs, podcasts that teach how to do the thing that you're trying to sell. Now, I got a question for you, Tara. What if I can't find someone who is teaching how to sell dog toys? Okay, so in that case, you want to cast a wider net. And you can do that in two ways. You'll take your topic and go a little broader and look for someone who is selling pet products. Maybe not dogs necessarily, but someone who's having success selling in the pet industry and research what they are doing. Or since you're selling physical products, you can find someone who's teaching about e-commerce and the practices that they're using that are helping them to be successful in their e-commerce business. Remember, this phase should take one to two weeks. Do they have to take one to two weeks? Oh, no. In fact, if you're ready to go, just go. These phases are not meant to limit you, slow you down. They're just guidelines, mostly for those who aren't moving forward because they're too scared. They're getting analysis paralysis. Our goal is to help you analyze, research, get great information, get motivation, but do not stop. There is momentum to creating a business. Speaking of, what do you got for us, Vanna, Tara, White? (laughs) I don't Uh, have a fancy dress. Oh. But phase three is kind of fun. It's like your build creation phase. You're going to create your minimum viable product. Basically the bare minimum of what you have to have to start marketing and selling your product. This is where you get creative with your brand, your copy, the content that you're going to put out there, or the product. You're putting together the things that you need to sell what you are going to sell. Do you need a website? What social media platforms are you going to be using? What services or platforms do you need to set up to sell your products online? Now, (laughs) that sounds like a lot. It really is just kind of what are the assets you need to build in order to put this thing out to the world? And then you'll grow and evolve with them. They'll get better over time. But what are the basics that you need to get out there to get you guys going? And this phase should take about two to four weeks, depending on what you're selling and what assets you need to set up. Take MU, for example. We set up our business entity, our podcast, the social media platforms we wanted to use, created a website, a training for you guys, an email series. And that is our minimum viable product. And once again, there could be a range. If you're raising a bunch of capital and you're going to create this really cool product overseas and you have to create the mold and all these different things, we're just saying don't take a ton of time creating the assets that you need to sell this. We're giving you some time to do it, but not a ton of time. For us, every business we started, it took some time. Really, the trickiest part of this phase is the content, the things that you want to say and how you want to say them, how you want to position yourself and what angles you're going to take. I can make websites all day long. But the content and how we want to show ourselves to the world is what takes some thinking in this phase. You may not be doing a lot of content marketing from the beginning. You might be doing some very direct sales, in which case you might be able to get going right away. It might only take you a few days, but maybe you got to like bake some cookies and look up some recipes, or maybe you got to order some product, or maybe you got to get some ads going, or maybe you have a software idea and you got to reach out to your buddy who knows how to code and he's got to get going on creating the minimal viable product, also known as your MVP. So basically there's going to be some things that you got to get going. Now, once again, okay, it might take longer to create that software product, especially if you have a full-time job or something, right? We're kind of assuming that nobody works or does anything or has anything going on. (laughs) So obviously you're working a full-time job. You're going to be trying to fit these into little spots of your life. And if you have a family and kids, it's going to be tricky. But we have seen people do this time and time again, even though they have a full time job might be a bit of a hustle, but it changes their life if they're willing to do it. I don't really love the term hustle because it usually means people working 80 hours a week and not seeing their family and being out of balance. That's not what we're talking about. But sometimes when you have that initial lift, sometimes you do got to put in a little extra time. But you also want to make sure you're taking care of yourself and your family. All right, phase four, sales and marketing. This is where the rubber meets the road, baby. This is everything. And this is what will separate those who are successful from everyone else. In a way, this is all your business really is. Marketing and sales really, really matter. And this is where most drop out because it's scary. It's intimidating when you don't know what you're doing. We are not having any MU dropouts. No. It's not allowed. 100% graduation. We've covered these a lot and it will be ongoing. It's probably the number one thing that you are going to be focusing on. Get this right and everything else will fall into place. It is the lifeblood of your business. And you should already have a pretty good idea of what you're going to do because in the last phase, you were doing all this research to figure out what your competition is up to. 
So you should be full of all kinds of ideas of where you can start. And we've talked about this in previous episodes, so no excuses. Let's go. Let's go. Sales and marketing is ongoing. So there's not like a time limit we're going to give you. But what I would say is give yourself what we call a 30-day push. What do we mean by this? Essentially, this is how you're going to really get some traction in your business. Depending on what you're selling, I would write down every single person that you know of or every business that you can find. Anyone who may possibly want your product or service, I would write their names down. I would get contact information for them. I would start calling. I would knock doors. I would email. I would text. I would do whatever it takes. I would reach out to people you know who might know someone who might be interested. You're going to do whatever it takes. You're going to get a ton of rejection. You're going to be okay with that rejection. Mm -hmm. You're just going to make it happen. Let's say you're going to do a car detailing business or a trash can washing business or a power washing business. Literally just go knock on a couple hundred doors a day. Take some flyers with you, pass them out, talk to everyone you know. Get people to put you in text groups and send you out to their friends. Within that 30 days, you literally might have enough clients to be financially free. And then you get referrals off of those people. Just hit it super hard. Now, I'm not saying after the 30 days to stop. We like to think in short waves, right? Mm -hmm. But by then you're going to have some momentum. You're going to have some traction and it's going to feel easier. You're going to be making money. And you're going to get over some hesitancy. So you'll feel a little more confident. You'll see things working. You'll get traction. That momentum will continue to build. And it'll be a beautiful, beautiful thing. There are also many, many services that you can use to help you with this. There are so many lists of every single industry you can think of where you can just call people, go to the business. If you're selling business to business. If you're selling a home service, the houses are everywhere, right? Just go. <laughs> if you're selling online, you'd focus more on ads or podcasting or YouTubing or webinars or SEO. In our software business, we use a service called Zoom Info to find out about local businesses that might be interested in our service. In an instance like that, you can also easily do a Google search and find all kinds of businesses that are close by that you can call or stop by. Anyway, bottom line, in any industry, in any niche, in anything you're doing, there are a number of people that you can call that either want your product directly or they might know of people who have them or they might be an influencer in your area and they might know people who want your product. If you're selling doggy toys, find other people who have dog groups on Facebook or forums or they might sell other products that might complement yours and see how you can work out a venture with them. But just go, 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 go. Because most of the time you're going to get a no. It's not going to work out. You're going to have people that you're going to follow up with that might be interested later on. But you've got to be able to handle this rejection. Do not look at it as rejection. Don't look at it as failure. It's not personal. It's not personal. Yeah, just give yourself a big, huge pat on the back. Have your goal be to reach out to a thousand people versus make a ton of money at this point. If you will do this, it will change your life. You will learn a ton from it. You'll learn resilience and it'll be great. Now, once again, if you just don't feel like there's any way you're going to do this, then that's fine. Maybe your angle is more of, of a blog or a podcast or a sales letter and you're going to drive some paid traffic to it. That's fine. Or maybe you find someone who's going to sell for you. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Ah. Is this what it sounds like to be in your brain? Yes. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Phase five, fulfill it. Deliver on the product or service that you have promised. In every business that we've had, this phase has just come naturally. When we need to fulfill it, we prepare how to fulfill it and we figure it out and we deliver on what we promised. And it comes way easier after you've done one through four. This is the easier part. Well, let's give a few examples. Dish Network. Okay, we knew we had to fulfill on that right away. So we had to have the satellite dishes and we had to have someone who was going to go and install those. Had to have professional installers. So we had them ready. So that was a little different. When we had our real estate investing business, our number one goal was to get a house. And then once we got the house, then we figured out how to fix the house. And then over time, we figured out how to systematize. But none of that came before we did the first few steps. And then same with the education business. We didn't totally know how to fulfill until we started doing our marketing and sales. And so we had to give an idea of what we were going to sell, but we always would sell something and then would create the course or the program as we went. Could you imagine trying to create all of that ahead of time? I don't think it ever would have happened. No, it you'd never be burnt out, out before it even got out there. And then with Millionaire University, what if we tried to do and create all of the things that we have in mind for Millionaire University from day one? <laughs> like, it's crazy to even think about, right? It would feel like a huge behemoth that would be really heavy and overwhelming, and we'd probably stop because there's not a lot of momentum in this huge, overwhelming project. It's piece by piece by piece. 
getting it out there and then moving with it. And I don't think we would have known totally what to do because we have an idea or a vision of what we think we want to do, but I'm sure we'll be doing some adjusting and pivoting. And we've already done a lot of that since we started the podcast. You don't have to have this perfect customer service department for Five Oak. We're barely now talking about a customer service department. You don't have to have all these things dialed in from the beginning or it's just not going to work. Okay, phase six, grow it, nail it, then scale it, baby. Yeah, yeah. We've already covered a lot today, so we're going to keep these last two phases pretty short. And then we can dive into these in detail more over time. The truth is, right now, just take action. Figure out what it is that you're going to sell and then sell it. In fact, that is how you grow. We're always telling our clients that the first sell is way, way, way harder than the next 10. And the first 10 are way, way harder than the next 100 and so on. In fact, in a nutshell, that is how you grow and scale. You figure out how to sell something once, and then you duplicate that process 10 times. And then you have other people help you duplicate that process. You start to create processes and systems. You leverage tools, software, and other people's time. You continue to dial in on your marketing message and strategies. Word of mouth starts coming together for you. Maybe you start to get some great reviews online. You now have customers and clients who are raving fans who are excited about what you have to offer. You can get testimonials. Maybe you can now hire an assistant who can do all of the things for you that you really don't love doing or that take a lot of your time that you can easily outsource to someone else. Okay, I know I kind of said a lot there really quickly. But the best thing you can do right now to grow your business is just start selling. Keep selling. Figure out every way you can to get your message out to the world as quickly as possible and keep track of what it took to do that. If you're calling people, how many people did you have to call? What kind of people did you call? This is the hardest part of growth because you've got to figure out these numbers so that you can grow. And the truth is, it's really not that hard. We make it hard, but you don't have to. So don't. Let's go. Let's do it. What are you waiting for? Come on. Phase seven, sell and or automate. So phase seven just represents when you've gotten to the point where you have grown your business and there is automation. For us, our goal is always to create a business that can essentially work without us or can work without very much involvement from us. You've worked hard. I mean, this takes a while, in most cases, several years. Depending on what you're doing, it doesn't have to take that long, but just saying it takes a while. It takes a lot of work. So at that point, you can kind of go into like a maintenance mode where it's like you've built this machine that works, but you still have to maintain it and keep an eye on it. And of course, you can hire like a CEO and, and all of that, but there's still some attachment for the most part. Or you can decide to sell. I mean, if you're like me and you have ADD and you get lots of ideas and you'd like to try new things, then maybe you can move on from that business, pass the torch on to someone else who can carry on what you've built. In a lot of cases, they might even be able to carry that on even better than you. But it's a great spot to be in because you'll have a lot of flexibility, a great residual income, and then you can choose to still stay a part of it or sell it and move on to the next thing. Once again, we'll continue to talk about these things, but we just wanted to take some time and go through those steps and really give you an idea of the entrepreneurial journey. Okay, so a quick recap. Phase one is the discovery phase. Determine what product or service you are going to sell. Phase two is the learning and research phase. Learn as much as you can about your product so you can sell it. Phase three is the build and creation phase. Create your minimal viable product. Phase four, sell that thing. Sell the heck out of that baby. Phase five, fulfill it. Phase six, grow and scale it. And then phase seven, automate, or if you want, sell it. Woo! All right, we did it. We did it. Yeah, baby. You did it. We did it. Let's go, everybody. Just remember, mm. your business is just a to-do list. That's it. What phase are you in? What do you need to do next? That's it. One step at a time. Sometimes it's just eliminating all the extra stuff. What is the thing you want to sell? Sell it. Take it one step at a time. Adjust as you go. And you can do this. We believe in you. And we're going to be here for you. Yes. Every step of the way. Check into the podcast. Subscribe to our newsletter. We ain't going to be sending out no spam and no junk mail. We're going to be sending some good stuff to keep you on track. We're going to be here for you, sharing everything with you that you need to be able to do consistent and persistent. Boom, boom. Pretend like you're in school or at work, but you're not. You're working for yourself. So you get to make the big bucks. It's so good. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to go. We love you. We're going to be here with you. We cannot wait to see what you do on your journey. And we will see you on the other side. Peace. Later.